and all. My name is Sadis Rahulak. This is a presentation about our AELD project, implementing AES-128 algorithm on hardware and analyzing its performance. The group members are myself, Sadis Rahulak, Som Banerjee, and Jaskirat Singh. The project objectives. The very first part of our project is to implement the AES-128 alg algorithm and figure out the functions that need to be moved on the hardware accelerator. After that, the functions to be moved on the hardware uh, needs to be optimized by using different pragmas and optimization techniques for the optimal resource utilization and latency. The, after that, we compare the performance on the hardware and the software and find the speed up and look for further scope of optimization if possible. Now, about the brief introduction about AES, the AES stands for Advanced Encryption Standard. It was standardized by the National Institute of Standards and Technology in the year 2000. Uh, it replaced the DES uh, encryption algorithm, which uh, was before it, and due to certain uh, reasons, it was not uh, very efficient as the AES. Now, the AES-128, it's also called AES, uh, specifically, is also called as uh, Regendel algorithm. It's a symmetric key encryption algorithm, which means that the same key is used both for encryption and decryption. So the whole uh, encryption or the whole security of the AES depends upon its key. So if there, someone has access to the key, he can uh, decrypt uh, this uh, text easily. So it has um, the AES 128 has a 128 bit private key. There are different variants of AES like AES 192, 256, which have different uh, bit keys. But for AES 128, we have 128 bit private key. And the structure of an AES is an iterative one. Uh, we have a total of 10 rounds of transformations plus one pre-round transformation. 128-bit input data is processed at a time, and each 128-bit uh, data is divided into 16 states of uh, each 8-bit data. And each 8-bit data is called a state. So we have a total of the 16 states of each 8-bit data, which is processed at a time. Now, there are three main states of AES. The first is the pre-round transformation or the initial round, where add round key, we are just adding the key to the plain text. Next, the main rounds, which is a round from one to 10. There are total 10 rounds in AES-128. So one to nine are called the main rounds. And in each round, there are four transformations, sub bytes, shift rows, mix column, and add round key. And then there is the final round, which only has three transformations, sub bytes, shift rows, and add round key. The difference between uh, the main rounds, um, difference between the different rounds uh, is just the key, which is used in the add round key. So we have a single key that is expanded using the key expansion. And for each row, each round, different key is used in the add round key section. We will see it. Now, the sub-bytes. The first transformation in the main uh, rounds is the sub-bytes or byte substitution. Now, the sub in the sub-bytes, uh, each data is taken and its inverse in multiplication in the Galba field to raise power 8 is found out. And then the affine transformation is impl uh, implemented on it to get its substituted value. Now, this is a very uh, complex uh, arithmetic. So instead of uh, doing all this, uh, it has, the values has been pre-calculated as we have, only, uh, you know, we have only eight bits in a state. So we have a total of 256 combinations. And all those 256 combinations have been uh, found out and uh, put it in the form of a table, known as substitution table or SOX, which is shown here. Now, uh, to get the substituted value, uh, the input state is uh, input state, which is of eight bits, is divided into two nibbles or a four uh, bit uh, sets. And the uh, top, the um, most significant four bits uh, represents the uh, row, and uh, the least significant four bits represents the column. For example, we have here EA. Now, to get the substituted value, the E represents the column, that's this column, and the A. Uh, e represents the row and the A represents the column. So uh, their intersection E and A 87 is the byte transformed uh, value of the EA. So this process, uh, it goes for each the state each state of uh, this matrix, the state matrix, and we get byte substituted value. Next, the shift rows. Uh, this phase includes the left shifting of rows of the input data matrix. Um, we have a 16 uh, states in a form of a four plus four matrix. Uh, the each uh, each row in, in the shift rows is uh, of, is shifted towards the left. Okay, so the first row is not shifted at all. It's just as such it is. The first uh, then the next row, the second row is shifted by one bit left, and this is circular shift. Uh, then the second and third row is shifted towards two positions to the left, and the final row to the three positions to the left, or we can say equivalent to one position to the right. And we get our shift rows. Next comes the mismix column. 
uh, step. This is one of the most uh, complex in this all the rounds because uh, what happens in the mixed column, we are uh, doing the matrix multiplication of the state matrix with a constant matrix. So the state matrix is multiple, but this multiplication, the matrix multiplication happens over the extension field, the Galois field, two raised power eight. Now, so what the exact arithmetic uh, of the Galois field two raised power eight is very complex, but uh, we just need to see uh, about our AES algorithm. Now, what sort of a multiplication is done in this? So let's see the Galois field uh, to raise power m. If we can talk about the Galois fields, here the numbers or the bits are represented in the form of polynomials, and all the arithmetic happens over the polynomials. Now, when we say Galois field to raise power m, what it indicates means what it means that the number of elements are m, and each element can take two values, zero and one. So Galois field to raise power eight means we have eight um, eight number of elements, and each element can take uh, two values, zero or one, or equivalently, we can say we have eight bit values, okay? Because each bit can have either zero value or one, and we have eight bit values. So uh, in the arithmetic part, the, for the Galois field to raise power m arithmetic, addition and subtraction is replaced by the XOR operation. For the multiplication uh, is a bit complex in the way that if uh, we multiply two polynomials, the result and the result obtained exceeds the field. The result is divided by an irreducible polynomial and its remainder is taken as the output. That is the mod operation is performed. Now, in simpler terms, we say if we have eight bit values and uh, multiplying it by a different uh, number, we get the more than eight bit values. So uh, uh, more than eight bits. Now, uh, the resultant, the resultant that's more than eight bit values is uh, divided by a, uh, another number such that its value uh, comes out to be uh, less than eight bit. Okay, and the irreducible polynomial uh, in case of uh, AES uh, uh, algorithm is this eight x raised power eight x raised power four x raised power three plus x plus one. Now, uh, in the form of bits, uh, what we can say that the coefficient of x in the polynomial corresponds to the bit value, either zero or one, and the power of x corresponds to the place of the bit. So uh, x raised power eight plus x raised power four plus x raised power three plus x plus one corresponds to uh, 0, 1, 1, b in hexadecimal. So the, uh, there is a 1 at first position, at uh, x, x is power 0 position, 0 position, 1 position, 3 position, 4 position, and 8 position. 0, 1, 3, 4, and 8. So this polynomial corresponds to 0, 1, 1, b hexadecimal value. So now, next is the adding round key. The round key is added uh, at the every stage. So what happens is that the, uh, we have the round keys which are generated by a which are generated by AES key scheduler, and it generates the round keys for each round. So we have a total of ten rounds and one bit round. So total number of one seventy six bit uh, keys. That means total number of eleven uh, keys of uh, sixteen uh, states each is generated. For the each uh, uh, for each uh, uh, round key stage, uh, we just add the input state with the round key that is generated. Now, as I already mentioned that in Galois field arithmetic, the addition corresponds to XOR operation. So it's simply we XOR the state matrix with the round key matrix to get our next state. Uh, this is the AES encryption algorithm code. Now, uh, the inputs are uh, round keys, plain text, which is to be encrypted and the Xbox values, while the output is a cipher text. And we can see the inputs are AES round key size that is 16. So 16 uh, inputs, uh, plain text is 16 of the size 8, and the cipher text and the output text is also 16 of the size 8. Now, uh, the first round, add first round key, we are adding, we are simply XORing the plain text, uh, that is the state matrix and the uh, round keys. Here, you see, we can see the K, K is uh, the uh, index of the round key, because for the each uh, different, if you go to each round, we have a different set of round keys. So to account for that, uh, we are uh, using this uh, index K, which is added by, uh, which is in incremented by 16 after every round, so that the next set of 16 uh, round keys are used for the next round. Then the main rounds, the first is the uh, sub bytes. We are just uh, taking the index of uh, the state, uh, each state, and uh, passing it onto the S box. The S box is not defined in, as the matrix here; it is defined as an uh, vector, as a very array, and uh, the index corresponds to the uh, uh, the index corresponds to the substituted value. Uh, for the value where this substituted value is, is. So next is the shift rows. We are just passing in this, uh, this state and uh, shifting the rows and getting the, uh, get the TMP variable. Now, after the sh shift rows, there's a mixed column. 
uh, if you remember in the mixed column, uh, we multiply uh, the state with a constant matrix. And uh, the constant matrix has two, three, one, one. Now, take an example for the first uh, out, first bit uh, of the output of the mixed column, CT0. It's equal to two times zero plus three times temp one plus temp two plus temp three. Now, uh, it uh, as I already mentioned that it's the Galois field to raise power eight multiplication and not uh, simple uh, multiplication that we know. In the Galois field to, uh, extension, Galois field extension two point eight to raise power eight multiplication, we have a mod operation. If uh, the multiplication exceeds uh, the total number of uh, bits, then we have to divide it by an irreducible polynomial. Okay, so this division operation is a very uh, is complex operation. So we will try to avoid it. So in place of the uh, division operation in this uh, in the special case of AES, what we do, we just uh, we only use the multiplication by two. Now the multiplication by two, uh, we don't need uh, a division operation. We can simply use this function. Uh, mul2 function, which uh, gets an input of uh, a, uh, anything which has input, and it checks if the last bit of a is, a is one, or last, last bit of the input is one. If it is one, then uh, it uh, mul2 has left, it shifts it by the one, that means multiply, uh, multiplies by two, and XORs with one b. This is as good, XOR with one b is as good as uh, this and uh, uh, mod operation. So that's why we are using uh, mul2 function only because uh, if, when we multiply by two, the mod operation is just uh, replaced by this XORing with one B. And if uh, the last bit is not one, then it's simply multiplication by two. And why we are using this uh, last bit uh, one, uh, if you can recall the mod operation only takes place if our multiplied value, if our output value exceeds uh, the eight bit length. So multiply by two, uh, what multiply by two does is that it increases uh, this bit width by one. So if we have seven bits as an input, we have eight bits as an output if we multiply it by two. So uh, the normal uh, flow was to just multiply input by two and check if uh, the ninth bit is one or not. But instead of doing this, what we do is that we know it will if uh, our eighth if our eighth bit is one, only then the ninth bit will go one. That means if only the eighth bit is one, only then it will exceed the uh, field. So we initially check before the multiplication if our input uh, last bit is one. If it's one, then we know it will be exceeding the field. So we just do this mod operation, that's uh, XOR operation. And if this bit is not one, that means the value is small. So so it won't exceed this field. So we just multiply it by two. But that is the case only when we multiply by two. So what we do is that all the operations which are not multiple of two, which are greater than multiple of two, with like three, four, five, whatever, we convert them into the multiples of two. So here's an example for the first bit. We have two temp zero, three temp one, temp two plus temp three. So three temp one can be converted to two temp one plus temp one. And then uh, these two are uh, joined together and we get two times zero plus tip. And this uh, uh, distributive law, associative law is uh, valid for the Galois field arithmetic. So we can do it. Now, once again, I need to remind you that this is the Galois field arithmetic and not our simple arithmetic. So two plus one is actually two XOR one. So one zero XOR zero one, we get one one. If it's not two plus one, we cannot say one plus one is two because in uh, Galois field arithmetic, one plus one gives zero. So that thing needs to be taken in mind. So in Gala field to raise power eight, we have this mul two times zero plus ten one. This end. so this goes for all these uh, mixed columns. And then add round key. We again add round key and uh, increment uh, the k value by sixteen uh, to get the next set of round keys. And for the last round, we have subbytes, shift rows, and add round key. We don't have any uh, mixed column in the last round. Now the shift rows, it is simple. We are just mapping the input matter rows to the output. So uh, the 12th will go to the 0, 0th will go to 4, 4. These are just around uh, this. Uh, uh, this is the first row and it is as uh, good as it is. Then there is a left shift for the second row, third row, two left shifts and three left shifts. Now about the decryption. After the encryption, uh, we have this uh, decryption algorithm. This is almost the same as the encryption. We can see all these uh, operations are the same but only in the reverse order. Now, uh, we have the add round key, uh, round keys, mixed column shift by the same operations in the reverse order. But uh, one thing that needs to be seen here is this uh, round key. Uh, for the encryption, our round, round key starts from the zero bit and goes on up to the 176. But for the decryption, the order is reversed. The, for the first round, uh, we uh, need to take the last 16 uh, states of the add round key, that means from one six, round key 160 to 167, and then we need to decrement it to, uh, towards the last round. Inverse mix column, the same Galva field to raise power eight matrix multiplication, but uh, this um, constant matrix is different. We had uh, two, three, one, one here, 14, 11, 39. Rest all the operations are 
the same. Inverse shift rules and inverse byte substitution. Here in the inverse shift rules, we do the right shift instead of left. For uh, encryption, we had the left shift. For uh, this decryption, we have the right shift. The rest, everything is same. And same with the byte substitution. Only difference is we don't have the S box here. We have the inverse S box. We can see it. All the X S box contents are changed. The rest, everything goes the same. So this is the decryption algorithm code. Here again, input is the round keys, uh, input decrypt, and the uh, inverse S box. While uh, output, we get the plain text or the decrypted text. The first round, we are just adding the round keys. And here, if we see the uh, round key index K, it's initialized as 60, 160. As I said, because the sequence of the round keys is reversed. First, it will be the last set of 16, and then decrementing by the 16, we get towards the first round. So here, after each round in the encryption, we were incrementing it by 16. Here, we are decrementing it by 16. Then the inverse shift flows, uh, sub bytes, and then in the main uh, round, in the main rounds, we have this add round key inverse mix column. Now the inverse mix column here, we can see we are also using the same approach, only multiplication by two. D mul two and mul two are the same. There is no difference in them. So we are again using the same, only multiplication by two. Uh, so we had the 14. We have uh, this 14 into uh, this. So the 14 can be divided into uh, two cross two into two into two. That's eight plus four plus two. Okay. So two into two into two plus D mul two into D mul two plus D mul two. So we have total 14. So any higher number can be um, uh, changed into this only multiplication by two because we know it's uh, simpler uh, to implement. So we are using only multiplication by two in this inverse mix columns also. And again, the same the shift rows and then inverse sub byte. And after each row, the k is decremented by 16. And finally, the last round key gives us the increment, decrement, uh, so, uh, decrypted text. Now, the AES key schedule on the, for uh, be it the encryption or the decryption, we need the round keys. And the round keys are generated by this module, AES key schedule. Now, the input to this module is 8-bit key, and from the 8-bit key, it generates 176 bits uh, round keys, which are uh, used in the 11, which are used in the 10 rounds plus one pre-round. That means total of 11 rounds. Uh, uh, the, uh, for the first set of 16 uh, states, or the, for the first round, the key is uh, copied as such. So here uh, we can see there it's been shown as a word, uh, as a four uh, concatenation of column, as a full column is shown as a uh, word. Yeah. Now, uh, for the first, uh, for the for, for the first uh, stay for the first round, the pre or the pre round, the key is as such uh, copied into this uh, round key state. Now, after that, uh, the last uh, word is uh, passed on through a uh, through a function called G. It's a complex function. It uh, transforms this W three. Now, uh, G, uh, the function G, what it has, the first uh, this word W three, which has the four states, it's uh, left shifted by one bit so set to the left shift by one bit and then passed on through the through the x s box substitution box and byte substitution then xor with round constant rcj and we get our transformed uh, word so it's the rotation so byte substitution and xor with the constant if you can see the rcj uh, only the first bit needs to be xor because uh, all the three bits we have to xor it with zero that's as good as uh, not doing any function that it will just pass on through it so only the first uh, first four bits okay so only the first byte on the first byte is xor with rcj so this is the function g g and then uh, this uh, transformed value is xor with w0 to get the w4 the w4 is the uh, first uh, round uh, first state of the next round so then uh, this w4 is xor with w1 to get the w5 w5 is xor with w2 to get the w6 and w6 is xor with w3 to get the w7 so these four set correspond to the uh, round keys for the second round. And the uh, same, the S7 is passed through the G function and the same uh, thing is iteratively uh, repeated 10 times to get all the round keys required. So total words 47 or we can say 176 bit round state round keys. And this is the key schedule code. We pass on uh, the key, 32 bit key, and then round uh, and uh, S box output is the uh, round keys hardware that is of the size 176. Here uh, we are passing on the 32 bit keys because each key is of uh, 8 bit value, each key is 8 bit value and our interface with the processor because the input we are getting from the profile processor is 32 bit uh, interface. So instead of sending uh, one bit, only uh, 8 bits at a time, we are concatenating the four uh, we are concatenating the four keys and sending uh, in the 32 bit value at a time. So the first step uh, is just uh, pasting these keys 
to the first 16 around keys that's done here and we are using here on the 8 bit arithmetic because in the hardware we can we have the bit level granularity so we are just using 8 bit shift keys so 8 bit keys uh, and uh, the first first four um, that means the first 16 uh, round keys are uh, just copies copied into it and then for the uh, next round that means that for the next 10 rounds first of all we need to uh, implement this g function so here this these four lines of code corresponds to g function temp zero we can say it is uh, this the first thing is the left shift and we can see the 12th this uh, 12th bit is there it is corresponds to three and one and that means it is the left shift if you can see here so the left shift and then byte substitution and then uh, this uh, XORing with round constant and so these four lines of code corresponds to this g function implementation <coughs> then uh, there is so uh, then this uh, value is XOR to be XORed with the w0 to get the w4 that's done here so this temp function that is the g value is uh, 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 XORed with uh, this w0 and we get the w4 uh, then these uh, to get the next four next three um, rounds to get the next three uh, words uh, what we do is that we have to xor the previous word we have to xor the previous one with uh, this w1 so that we get the w5 that's for the three or uh, from four to 16. now for the final uh, when all the t round keys have been we just uh, copy these t uh, round keys into the round keys hardware the reason why we don't use the uh, round keys as they here is because uh, if we perform it on the hardware the tool will show the error that in uh, you are using the in output that's not uh, in output cannot be uh, inferred for this stream type data so we have to use the t round keys and then after uh, this in a variable uh, local variable we can just copy these local variables to the uh, output port now this is the function distribution between ps and pl we are taking the inputs and the outputs will go from to the ps part and all the pl functions that is encryption decryption and the expansion is performed on the pl itself now the main function uh, the uh, any uh, the tool starts its execution from the main function and uh, in the beginning what we do we allocate we uh, declare the pointers we declare the pointers to our variables which we are going to use the key input text output text the output text from the hardware output text from the software and the golden out which we are going to use to uh, validate our to verify our design so we allocate the memory the memory is allocated using sds alloc function uh, and not the malloc function that we normally use in c the reason being the sds alloc function uh, what it does is that it assigns the contiguous uh, memory locations and not the random memory locations which is uh, needed uh, because we are using we are also using the sds zero copy pragma which uh, have, for where we have to use a continuous contiguous uh, block of memory the same is there and we can see that we have this uh, declared as unit 32 as i already mentioned that uh, we are using we are concatenating this uh, four key values or the input text values everything we are concatenating four values so that we get a uh, high throughput uh, by using the 32 bit um, because our interface is 32 bit so uh, we are using the full interface uh, potential now if the memory allocation fails we just uh, uh, release the memory or deallocate the memory and uh, terminate the function now here uh, we can see we have declared uh, t key as t plain text and sorry plain text cipher text and uh, t key uh, these are the three uh, values for uh, these are actually the input values we could have taken it uh, from the file or um, the other input from other the software which generates it so but here we have declared it because it's just for the demonstration purposes so here we are declaring it as a static as such so this is the key which is used for uh, the encryption and decryption purposes we can see it's a 128 bit key divided into the uh, 16 states uh, of the four bit each of sorry of a byte each yeah, eight bit each same in the case with plain text and cipher text now uh, we have uh, the another variable mode uh, which uh, determines if we are going to encrypt the data or decrypt the data and uh, the, uh, the scanner function it allows the user uh, to determine if it needs to uh, encrypt the data or decrypt the data so the plain uh, now if we go for the encryption the input to the our, our top module will uh, the plain text will go as an input to the top module and cipher text will go for the golden out uh, or the golden reference uh, we have already uh, established that this for the for the plain text this and the key this we have this and AES 128 bit encryption as a cipher text so if uh, we are going to encrypt this plain text and using this key we know the cipher text will be this so it will act as a golden reference for the decryption uh, the input to this uh, function uh, cipher text will go to the input to the function and plain text will go as a golden output which is defined here and also we have concatenated uh, these values and send it to the hardware same with the key concatenation of the keys and then we will send it to the hardware then uh, to compare the performance we need both the uh, software uh, implementation and the hardware implementation here is this so we have the sw func function uh, which takes the same values the key mode input text and the output is the output text software 
and this uh, hardware uh, SW function is uh, to be implemented on the PS part itself. And then we have the hardware encryption, um, which has the SW func function, same key, mode, input text, and output text, which is hardware function. And uh, we are using this count start and count stop as this clock timer. So it counts the number of uh, clock periods which is taken. So how many clock periods is taken by the software, how many clock periods is taken by the hardware, through which we can analyze the performance data. So uh, this output text and this output text software and the output text will go to the result check function, which will check if the output text and the output text software matches the golden out uh, if uh, if it matches the golden out then if it doesn't match the uh, golden out so uh, it will return uh, the status will be zero this it will uh, return minus one and terminate the function there and we will get the failed message okay now if the status is one that means the result check function is uh, done it's good our golden out matches with this output text and software so uh, we will get the output decrypted text printed as well as we will get uh, this speed up also and we can analyze the performance. Then we just uh, deallocate the memory and terminate the function. Now the result check function, this is our result check function uh, where we just check the output text with the golden text and the output check software, output text software with the golden text. And we, uh, if uh, it doesn't match, we print the field and terminate it. If it matches, we return one, which is using the main function. Now uh, the top model hardware function where all the, uh, this is the function where uh, all our AES key schedule encrypt or decrypt functions are uh, called upon. Now, for we uh, we can see we have declared the static uh, Xbox hardware here and inverse Xbox here, and also the input uh, data is uh, given either to the input encrypt or the input decrypt based upon the mode, which is a mode is also passed on from the main function. And also the mode will uh, determine if uh, the output text will be the plain text or the cipher text for for the encrypt. If we have the encrypt, then input and uh, in, uh, input data will go to the input text will go to the input encrypt and the cipher text would go to the output encrypt. And for the decrypt function, the input data will go to input decrypt and the plain text will go to output text. Now, finally, the header file, we can see uh, we are using uh, intypes.h because we are using that uh, PRI64 uh, to uh, in the main function uh, to print the 64-bit values. And we are using apint.h uh, because we are using this AP uh, uint 8-bit. Uh, 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 that means the random, we are using this arbitrary precision type uh, unsigned integer value. So we have to include this. In. And we've also defined the block size. Uh, we have a block size of 16. The number of rounds in AS128 is 10. The round key size is 176 uh, for the 10 rounds, 160, and the one additional round, so it's 176. And we also defined uh, encrypt as 0 and decrypt as 1. So just for the readability, the, this is uh, for the mode, if mode value is 0, we say it's encrypt and 1 is decrypt. Then we are declared, uh, we are. Uh, declaring the function hardware func where oh, the key input text and output text are passed. Uh, we are also using, because we are using this um, pointer type variables, we are using the pointers, we are passing the pointer information. So we are using this uh, SDS zero data copy pragma and uh, this information, the pointer information, how much data needs to be uh, sent is uh, yeah, in this. So it means that uh, for, we have a UN 32 TP and the four uh, values are sent for the key, four for the input text and four for the output text and zero data we have two uh, pragmas here we can use the data copy pragma data zero copy pragma the zero copy pragma mean in the uh, tells the tool to um, that the, uh, the hardware function uh, will uh, itself uh, access the memory through this hp ports and so uh, data mover is uh, generated uh, data mover is implied and also we are uh, declaring here the sbox and inverse xbox which are used by the software implementation so this was about the aes encryption decryption and the code the next is the pragmas which i just is going uh, to explain thank you very much hello my name is Kirit. so i will be explaining the pragmas we are used for our hardware function starting from the very second line we have included apint.h so whenever we write a hardware function the operator sizes we use depends upon the data type we are using in our accelerator code so uh, previous previously uint is a C++ data type, but when it will use it in hardware function, it will result in a larger and a slower hardware resource, and also they will limit the performance of our hardware function. So instead, we will uh, we are using bit accurate, which is AP or is AP which is arbitrary precision data type. So it so it will have smaller operator sizes, which will result in the faster execution, and also the execution can be done at a higher clock frequency by using the less power. So this is the advantage why you are using arbitrary precision instead of the uint data type. So coming on to our key scheduling part, our very first function is AES key schedule. So as we can see, we have completely partitioned the local arrays, which is a round key stamp and RC. So what complete partitioning do is instead of a single memory, it makes multiple small memory where each memory is of 
size of one element. So now each element has its own read write port. It increases the overall speed up because when the loop is unrolled, the operations can be carried out in parallel in parallel because we have now access to each and every element, which further increases the throughput of our hardware function. Moving further, we have used pipeline pragma. So the pipeline pragma reduces the initiation interval so that the operations can be carried out concurrently. Uh, again, we have used pipeline pragma, but here we have used pipelining for the outer loop. So what the tool does is when we pipeline the outer loop, as you can see this key schedule L2, we have pipeline the outer loop. So the tool automatically unrolls all the inner loops. So we did not need to explicitly mention any pragma for them because they're automatically unrolled by the tool itself. And moving further, we have HLS unroll pragma. So what unrolling does is it creates multiple independent operation rather than a single collection of operations. So when we use an unroll pragma for each I, the operation can be carried out in one clock cycle. As I have mentioned earlier, my T round keys is already partitioned and also my round keys hardware. It is also partitioned. So now I have access to each and every element and hence for all eyes, I can do this operation parallelly because also there's not any such major dependency over here. So it will increase the, increase the overall throughput of the hardware function. So moving on to the encryption part, our first function is shift rows. So it is basically a map. It is just, it is just mapping one array to another. So as arm cortex a nine is an outer order processor. So all of these statements will be executed in parallel. Uh, here we have used HLS inline pragma. So what inline does is when we will call this function. So instead of calling the function, the compiler will just see instead of a separate function, the compiler will see the logic of the function placed over there and hence it will remove it as a separate entity when we were, when we are calling a function, this improves the latency and reduces the function call overhead. As we can see, uh, in the next function where we are calling this fun shift rows. So instead of calling this and creating a call overhead, the logic of this function will be placed over here when the compiler will compile the code. So, and similarly, the next function, which is mul2, we have again used inline pragma. Again, instead of trading as a separate entity, the compiler will just see the logic of the code where we are calling this function. So the, the, all the function call overheads will be removed. As we can see, we are calling it multiple times. So instead of calling it multiple times, the compiler will just place the logic over here and hence it will increase the throughput. So next function is AES encrypt 128. So again, we have look, we have array partition, the local arrays, as we can see, the reason is same. It will increase the number of read write ports and hence the operations can be dealt in parallel because we can access more memory. Again, we have used unrolling, uh, unrolling, uh, as we can see our CT is partitioned, plain text is partitioned, round keys partition. So this XOR operation and this CT updating the CT for all I can be done in a single clock cycle. Uh, again, moving further here, we are here. We have nine rounds and we have pipeline the outer loop again, pipelining the outer loop, the tool itself will unroll all the inner loops. So as you can see, there are three inner loops and one, the shift rows operation. So this is in line, I have, as I've already mentioned, and all of, and all other three loops will get automatically unrolled by the tool. So moving further, we have two outer loops, uh, for them, we have used unroll pragma, unroll pragma again, the same reason. Here CT is partitioned, our S box is partitioned. So this can be done parallelly and same goes for the, this ciphertext, this last loop okay, where we are updating the ciphertext. Now moving further, we have decryption part. So the decryption part is moreover, very similar to the encryption part. Instead here, some operations are done in the reverse order. So instead of shift rows here, we have inverse shift rows. Again, we have used inline pragma. So instead of treating it as a separate entity, when you call the function, the compiler will just see the logic of the function instead of a function reducing the function call overhead. And similarly for the D mul2 function, which is just multiplication again, to reduce the call overhead, we are inlining it uh, and the decryption function. And then now comes the AES decrypt again, we have locally partition, we have partitioned the local arrays completely so that we can access each element. We can access each element individually. And hence when we unroll, unroll some loop, so the 
operation can be done in a single clock cycle the structure the structure is more of a same as in question part the outer loops we for outer loops we are using unroll pla unroll plasma so that all of these thing happen in single clock cycle and for the nested loop we have used pipeline so that the all the inner loops gets unrolled automatically by the tool so now coming to the top, aes decrypt and then aes encryption this one and then we have aes key scheduling which is which was the first, first function so our main function is this hardware function which is calling all of these functions so the input to this function is our key mode input text and output text so what we have done is we have locally created the arrays and stored those values inside this and then we have partitioned all these local arrays completely also this is our in the s box and this is inverse x box which consists of 256 elements we have also partitioned them completely so the advantage we know that after partitioning we can access each element in parallel and more of more data can be accessed so after the partitioning what we have done when we are calling these functions as you can see uh, as you can see here we are calling all above three functions so here we are passing the already partitioned arrays so as i talked earlier that my round keys was array partitioned s box partition cyber text was partition we have partitioned them in the top function and then we have passed those partitioned arrays into our subsequent functions and then for collecting the result we have just used uh, collecting the output text the like for the collecting result we have just used output text and here we have used pipeline pragma again pipeline will reduce initiation interval uh, making the operations to happen in the concurrent manner yeah so i think that's that's all we have used pragmas so now further i will discuss the results which we have obtained after applying the pragmas so here are the results of the optimization what we have done so after the optimization uh, we can see that our decryption function takes at uh, have a latency of 20 clock cycles and encryption also have 20 clock cycles and for key scheduling we have 36 clock cycles of latency uh, as we can also see here the utilization 30 31% uh, of LUTs are utilized 6% of flip flops and 22% of block rams are used and when we analyze the function individually we can see how the individual function has the utilization and how like how what is the latency so for encryption we have 20 and for decryption we have again 20 and for the key scheduling part we have 36 it is much better as compared to the unoptimized version so this was for the optimized version uh, for the unoptimized unoptimized part we can see earlier our hardware function was taking around 3390 clock cycles the top function which is hardware function so till now we have discussed three functions which were my uh, and was using 17 block rams so after optimization we have eventually reduced this 3300 clock cycles to 84 so just 84 clock cycles but instead the utilization of our LUTs has increased so this resource utilization over the LUTs was like the utilization increased by three times but we can see the latency dropped by a very significant amount and similar goes for the decryption earlier it was around 1178 clock cycles and then we were able to reduce it to 20 clock cycles uh, but and the trade-off is again that we have used more number of LUTs and same goes for the encryption earlier it was 1106 clock cycles now we have 20 clock cycles again we can see LUT, there are more LUTs used and then for the key scheduling also earlier it was 933 and now we have achieved around 36 clock cycles uh, and also like we can again see the trade-off the number of LUTs has been increased also the number of flip-flops used have increased but the number of block ramps what we were using earlier get reduced as when we optimize the code so i think these results uh, these results are further discussed in the hard demo thank you this is the demo for our uh, project uh, so this is my project we will just uh, run as launch our hardware it will take some time so okay, uh, our platform is ZC702 board where I am running this right now. The hardware and we can see these hardware functions 
decrypt, encrypt, scheduling, multiplication, multiple multi data field, uh, two multi hardware function, which are top module and shift rows and inverse shift rows. So these are the functions that needs to be implemented on the hardware. And we can see I had already uh, run it before for this encryption uh, in the encryption mode. We can see uh, the input plain text as this and uh, encryption is successful and uh, the encrypted text uh, comes out to be this, which is uh, the golden output, which um, uh, reference or golden reference. So we can see the software, hardware, as well as golden, they are all the same. And so the encryption is successful. And uh, the average improvement in the execution time comes up to be 1.81. For the different runs, it is almost around 1.8. So that is uh, for the different runs, we get almost the same for this encrypt part. So 1.8 or 1.85 or 1.79. So it's almost the same. And uh, now uh, I will go for the decrypt. So I will just press one, enter. So it gets into the decryption mode. So the decryption is successful. We can see input encrypted text is this, and the golden output software hardware all matches. The average improvement is uh, 0 0.78. And if we can see, yes. so for if a 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, this was our input plain text, the FS0, B88, this came, came out to be our encrypted text. So this is the text that we are feeding to the decryption module, the same. And we will see, we see that input plain text or is the encrypted text. So our encryption and decryption is successful, and our average improvement uh, for this is also 1.8 or 1.78 around. So this is about 1.8. So this was uh, the demo of our project, AES encryption, and it is successful. We can see the good average improvement. And uh, given the fact that uh, initially our average improvement was the average improve, uh, improvement was about uh, uh, for the unoptimized code, it was almost 0 0.34. So after the uh, applying pragmas and uh, after some code optimizations, uh, we can see the speed up of 1.81. So that was about the demo. Thank you.